Hello, 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 and thank you for liking, subscribing, and sharing the vis- the visual podcast and Sarah appeared. Of course, my name is Sarah, and, you know, I've just been detailing, like, literally my walk, um, detailing, you know, my walk with Christ. Obviously, there's ups, obviously, there's downs, but I really... I'm pushing myself to not shy away from those moments unless it's like a moment that ends up being offensive because I'm being petty or I'm not being, you know, I'm being childish, Um, which I've been, you know, the Holy Spirit's been working on me with that. I'm really happy about that. Because, you know, I never was the type of person where I was outwardly. That's the passive aggressiveness, like, power struggle within me. Like, outwardly, I was never childish. But inwardly, I was childish. And so it's like, what's the point? Like, let it out. Be who you are. And then once you let it out, let God take it away. Because it feels better when you're maturity feels better it's painful going through the process but it feels better on the other side because you're not weighed down with things that don't matter like maturity is literally a waste basket full of distractions maturity makes it better because maturity can take the trash out and keep the essential and when it gets down to it there's Not a whole lot that we need to pay attention to. Not a whole lot that we need to react to. There's more things that we need to focus on. And I think one of the things that has been offensive for me that I've had to learn to talk myself through and also put myself on the other side of the perspective from wherever the criticism is coming from, I have had to kind of had a a heart and a head struggle because there are people out there who need guidance in order to tap into their greatness. And when there's a void of that, or when they're fought in the area of being connected to information, not just people, but just because I believe God can educate you in more ways than one, but the biggest way that he'll educate you is through the relationships in your life because they'll mirror what's wrong or what's right or what needs improvement. I believe in that wholeheartedly. But um, yeah, like I think some people, when they see creatives or they see individuals who are more of um, an alternative flair, they automatically like, oh, what are you doing? You're, you're, you know, you're not doing this. You're not doing that. It's like, um, I don't know. I believe that you really have to be in tune with God for your life because if you feel like you are behind or you're not working in the full, because you have to know when you're working in the capacity of your calling or not. I can honestly say that I'm not working in the full capacity of my calling. I'm not necessarily, I'm not, I'm not even like running away from my calling. I'm actually, I'm actually on God's timeline and I've been resisting and fighting his timeline. God does have um, a specific calling for my life. But if I allow myself, my impatience, If I allow factors or even people around me to try to push past the timelines that God has set for my calling, then I could be pushed into a detour. God, for how how Jesus works, how I've seen, if you behind in your calling and you get connected with him, he'll accelerate you. He'll quicken you. But if you feel like you're behind and he has you on a steady path, and he has things that he needs you to get a hold of or learn before you get to the next level, then a lot of that unsteadiness is your flesh. Because, like, your soul and your spirit knows what's coming up ahead. Even in your mind, you can't see it. So it's like your flesh gets antsy. 
And it's just a feeling. It's just an emotion. It's not a fact. As long as you keep checking in with God, God will give you the facts concerning your life. As long as you keep checking in. That means anything, if God has to take me through a process and he says the process is for X amount of time or X amount of months where I have to go through a process, it doesn't matter what, who, what happens. He still wants me to go through that process so that I can accomplish his work in the earth. No matter how different or creative or counterculture that may be, I still have a work to do and I have a process. And like, yeah, like when it comes to that, the best advice that I could give, the best advice that I could give to somebody who is like just now giving their life to Christ and like coming into the like, like coming into the faith and then like joining church or checking churches out. Um, don't pay no mind to these people. Don't pay no mind to nobody. You know, unless God has said, pay this person some mind. Because you can't do it alone. It takes a village. You cannot do this walk alone. You have to have somebody that you can confide in, or you have to have somebody who can teach you, or you have to have somebody that you can submit to. It's biblical. Relationships are bi- are biblical. But just don't let them drive you crazy. And give grace to those who are just starting out. But ultimately, give grace to yourself. And know when it's time to, like, pull back, pull away, and do your own thing. And know when it's time to roll up your sleeves and get involved. And that only comes through what God tells you. You know, take your time and really, you know, pray about where it is that you should go. Where Where is your tribe? Where do you belong? Because everybody belongs to some sort of tribe. You cannot just be always in a cave by yourself. You you need each other. When I go, when I do my volunteer service, it makes me feel more alive than anything because I, I'm able to connect with people and I'm able to give somebody for the free 99 something that they don't usually get, which is respect. Yes, sir. No, ma'am. How's your day? You know, just giving somebody a smile. It takes me away from, like, strife. Yeah. And when you really have the power of God in you, you're not going to be perfect. But you are going to examine yourself. You'll put yourself in time out and you will tell off on yourself. You really don't have too much to hide. That's why nobody could ever say anything or call you out. You put yourself on timeout. Yeah, I did it. That sound like me, yep. Well, if I didn't do it, I, that sound like something I would do. You'll, you'll be honest. Why? Because you're intentional about your healing. And if you're not intentional about your healing, pray that God give you intentionality. That's the ability to prioritize whatever is in front of you and give it your all because you know the you you know the momentum but you also know the importance of what it's going to take to operate in whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish it's you know and when you have certain things that you've come up against you know mentally spiritually whatever you know trauma, relationally, like sometimes you outside of your mind and you don't even know how to get it together. Sometimes you do not know how to get it together. You're outside of your mind. You're outside of the box. You just don't, you just don't know how to function. And it's okay when you're in those seasons of recovery. It's okay for God to, you know, 
do some patchwork on you so that you learn how to function again. Like if you don't heal the right way, then there is a wrong way to heal. And when you go to function again, you'll have a hiccup or you'll have something that injures you along the way because you didn't heal the right way. And usually healing the right way takes time because you're going to mess up. Sometimes you take your cast off too early. Sometimes you scratch up your skin. Sometimes, you know, you fall on your crutches. Things happen. Okay, sorry. We got disconnected real quick and I had to, like, recharge up. But, yeah, like, I think this episode I called it Don't Let These Folk Kill You. And that's really what it's about, like, you know, Like, Jesus symbolically died for our sins. He literally let the crowd kill him, but it was for our highest good. So, like, if he went through all of that, I don't have to repeat that. I'm not my own savior. And I can't control what's out of my control, but I can control my own actions and how I respond to things. So a change in behavior pattern is what really is the testament but it takes time it takes time and it takes being intentional about applying that wisdom that you get from that you get from god like um ecclesiastic seven eleven. it says wisdom like an inheritance is a good thing and benefits those who see the sun Like, Ecclesiastics, more than Proverbs, I've connected with in regards to breaking down. I think Ecclesiastics really does, like, break down, like, what the world will call your ego. I think Ecclesiastics does a good job of, like, showing you just some of the common things that you can run into in life that will really trip you up in your heart. And so, like, dropping vanity, dropping pride, you know, not only obtaining but applying wisdom in practical ways, but in strategic ways as well. Like, a lot of people, they like to be in Proverbs, and I like, I love a good Proverbs, don't get me wrong, but Ecclesiastics has just been hitting different for me, because I think it, it hits everything that I've dealt with. And everything that I've needed to surrender over to God. Like everything. Um, Ecclesiastics has been helping me get back to my true self. You know, I see myself in the scriptures. So Ecclesiastics has been helping me with that. I haven't run into a chapter yet that didn't apply. Um, So yeah, if you're looking for practical tips, but also like, strategic uh strategic t- uh tips in wisdom also like if you're one of those people where you have to regularly do a heart check i think that's everybody right but if you have to do a heart check regularly and you also check like your motives you just do an inventory you know and if you're new to the faith ecclesiastics is is that book it, it's real. Ecclesiastics is real. Yeah, um, sorry, but I was just reading into it. Ecclesiastics has 
a lot of practical wisdom. Um, so definitely check into that. And I had just got lost in, I'm one of those people where I grab the scripture and I can get just locked in and my mind can just go with it. So, cause I prayed that, I think I pray to God that he would make the Bible more interesting to me, that I would find like clues and patterns and things that make me want to look deeper and break down words and things in the Bible. And he, he did that for me. So it makes it a lot, it makes it a lot better. But the moral of this whole story, saga, podcast platform is your walk with God is going to be unique to you. You have to listen strictly to what God has to say. And then in the listening, you have to ask God, you know, to make your capacity for loving him greater than your desires. And ask him for repentance daily for whatever I believe for me what's really been helping with my walk with Christ is doing heart checks and not paying attention to a lot of things that just do not require my my energy don't let these folks kill you